Hi and welcome back to my channel. We are on block number three of our 2023 Sew With Me series. So if you missed video number one, I'm gonna be referring you back to that at the beginning of all of these videos because it covers all of the details on our 2023 Sew Along. It covers how many blocks, what sizes, when the blocks are releasing, the finished uh, fabric requirements, finished quilt size, all of that and all of the fabric that I will be using. So if you missed any of that, make sure to go back and watch the beginning of that video so you can get all of those details. Now let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at block number three for our series this year. So here is block number three. It is this really cute star unit with a nine patch in the center. And to make it a little bit more fun, I did a, a, two different colors here on our star points. And when you see the 12 and a half inch block, it even looks a little bit different. This is my Christmas version, obviously, and I was use, I'm was i using the fig tree fabrics like I mentioned, and then this one had that Lori Holt background as well. This block came together really well. I will show you my back. I just pressed everything to one side, and I did Mary Ellen's best press this when it was done just to give it a final press, and it's so nice and flat and just ready to be sewn into the quilt. So here, is my 12 and a half inch version. This is the one we're gonna be making into today's video. And I just used all reds. I used my same background, which is what I'm gonna be doing for all of our 12 and a half inch version blocks. But keeping these corner squares red, I think really changes the look of this block. And then in today's video, I am gonna be showing you a new technique. We are going to learn how to spin our seams. So if you can see those little mini four patch units right there in the center of that block, that's called spinning your seams and it can really really help distribute some of the bulk where you have areas where four different seams come together like in this nine patch unit. And it just really helps it make, lay a lot flatter and it gives you really nice accurate corners. Like look at those corners, those came together so nicely. So hopefully you're gonna learn something new in today's video. There will also be a link on where you can download the pattern for today's video below. Just click the more button if you're on your computer or click the little down arrow if you're on your tablet or phone and that will open up the information. You can also go to my website at confessionsofahomeschooler.com and just search 2023 Sew With Me and any blocks that have been released will be there for you. Let's go ahead and dive right into the tutorial. So here is block number three. This is such a fun and cute little block. Let's go ahead and get started. Make sure to download your PDF instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our E and F squares. And I'm just using these little alphabeties to mark my fabrics because that way I don't get them mixed up. You can get those at Fat Quarter Shop. I use them for pretty much every project that I have. We're gonna take one of our squares and we're gonna place them right side together. And then you're gonna draw a line from corner to corner. You can just use a friction pin. These come off with heat. I don't actually do this anymore. I don't bother drawing the lines anymore because I have that seam tape on my sewing machine and so you don't have to draw the lines when you have this stuff. It's pretty handy. So then we're going to take this to our sewing machine and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch away from this center line on both sides and when we sew that it's going to open it up into two half square triangles. So we're going to get two half square triangles out of each one of these units. So I'm going to go ahead and take that over. We need eight half square triangles in total. So we're gonna do them all at one time. And to sew this, I'm lining up the tip of this corner up here with the side of my presser foot. And you can't see it yet, but this other tip down here is gonna be lined up with my one quarter of an inch line on my tape. Now we can just cut these apart and then we're also going to cut them down that center line that we drew or just in between and on yours you're going to want to spread some of this out. I'm going to move these up just a little bit so that I don't accidentally cut into my other fabric. And then when we sew these together or when we press them, the trick is going to be to press them all to the same side. So for me, I'm gonna press them towards my darker red. So I have them all flipped up just like this. 
And to press, I just set the seam and then flip one up. And sometimes I'll just come up here and set the seam all at once. Make my life easier. You can use a tailor's clapper if you want, uh, just to let those cool down. Next, we need to trim our half square triangles, and we're gonna be trimming these to three and a half inches square. If you're doing the 12 inch block, you'll wanna follow the instructions for the six inch block. And when I'm trimming these half square triangles, I'm lining up my diagonal line along my seam line, and then I'm just making sure that I have enough to trim all four sides so they're perfectly square. But I am gonna trim these all up because that'll just make our next step a little bit easier. All right, now we've got all of our half tri square triangles. We're ready to move on to the next step. We need our B squares. And so we're gonna just do one at a time, but we're gonna do them all the same way. Now, this part gets a little bit tricky, so I highly recommend looking at your pattern, and you're gonna wanna place your fabric exactly like it's shown in the pattern. So mine is shown to place the lighter one up and the darker one down, and then we're gonna sew a diagonal line going across both fabrics. And you're going to want to sew with a scat quarter of an inch. And what a scat quarter of an inch means is that you're sewing just a hair next to the outside of this line. So instead of sewing directly on the line, you're just going to sew right next to it. That's going to account for when we fold this fabric back. It just takes up a tiny bit of space, the fabric does, when you fold it back. And so when you fold it back, you're going to end up with this nice half square triangle on your corners, which is kind of a cool effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can mark all these or you can use your diagonal seam tape, totally up to you. I'm gonna sew all four with this left side on first. We're gonna trim it, press it back, and then we'll come back and we'll sew the other side on. So I'm gonna take all this to my sewing machine. All right, here we are. We just need to trim these apart. And sometimes on these, I will actually press back before I trim them. And I do that because that way, if you can see this edge already when you press it back, you can make sure that that's lining directly up with the layers underneath and you can get it a little bit straighter uh, because these flying geese units can be kind of wonky. And then you can come back I'm not gonna use that one. <laughs> then you can come back, trim one quarter of an inch away from that stitch line. And then you have perfect flying geese, well, start to a flying geese unit. So we're gonna do that to all of these. So I'm just gonna set this one, my cutting board's kind of tiny here, so I'm just gonna set that one aside. All right, I chose to press all of them to one side towards the dark fabric, but I thought just for fun, we'd press one open and just see how that's gonna affect our block. So I'll be your guinea pig. So next we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, make sure you're following the illustration in your pattern and you're gonna want your same colors to be touching so that when you fold them back, these two are next to each other. And so I like to do this on all of my blocks before I put them over there or do them at my sewing machine, but I make sure that they are all identical. That way when I get to my sewing machine, I don't accidentally sew something going the wrong way. Wait, <laughs> there we go. Again, I'm not drawing my lines, but if you are new to sewing, I would suggest drawing your diagonal line on here. Um, your blocks will be much more accurate. 
and I'm just keeping my corner right here lined up with my red line and just a hair to the side. Let's do this one first. This is the one that I pressed open. So we'll press this one open as well. Now we'll just take this one and I press it to the one side first and then I'll go back through and press it open. And I find that when you're pressing your seams open, it's really helpful if you sew with a shorter stitch length. So I'll usually do like a one and a half stitch length instead of 2.0. That way you don't have to worry as much about these seams popping open um, once your quilt is being quilted. So just be careful of that. But a lot of times pressing open can really help you flatten those seams. So we'll just let that one cool while we trim the rest of these. look pretty good. We are still going to take a quick look at them and trim them if needed. So this one I can see I've got a little edge here. You're going to be trimming these to six and a half by three and a half. And see this one just got a little bit wonky over here so that's why I have that weird edge. I've got still a little bit of off edge right here but it's not enough to make a difference when I'm sewing my block together so I'm not going to worry about it. But I do like to go through and just check all these to make sure they're as straight as I can get them because if you're cutting and trimming as you go, your final block will be a lot more accurate. So I'm always checking myself all along the way. Especially with blocks like this, flying geese are notoriously wonky. So it's just a good idea to check. And I'm usually going to go cutting off this side because this side was already pre-cut. So most likely it's relatively straight. If there's going to be any wonkiness, it's going to be around these edges we added. All right, so now we've got all of our blocks. We did reduce some bulk right here where these three seams came together. And eventually we'll, be have, we'll have reduced some bulk right here where all of these are coming together, but these aren't actually lining up with any other seams. They're gonna be on the top of a nine patch, so it's not that big of a deal. So I think for this block, I probably wouldn't worry about pressing open too much. Okay, so the flying geese are done. We're gonna set those aside, and we're gonna work on our nine patch unit. And so we're gonna grab our C and our D squares. And I decided to do a different square in the middle, just because I thought that that would be fun. You can do them all the same if you want. So I'm gonna lay these out the way that I want them so that when I go to my sewing machine, I can just sew and I don't have to think about it. So I'm gonna have mine be this way. You might not even be able to tell on camera, but these two fabrics are slightly different. And on my Christmas block, I made them just a totally different color. So we're gonna chain piece these, which means we're gonna take this row, flip it right side down onto this row, so one quarter of an inch, down this edge and then we'll come back and add this third edge and then I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick to make these seams a little bit less bulky. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to just lay these down right here like this. I'm going to put these all over at my machine in order and then I'm actually going to pick these up as well in order and take these to my machine as well. That way we can sew them all at one time. Feel free to pin if you like. Now we're just going to go back and I'm just going to grab my fabric from my pile over here and add them. This is a small nine patch so it's not too difficult to keep these in order. Cut these apart. 
Just be careful you don't cut your fabric. And for these, we're gonna press towards the dark. And this little method's only gonna work if you press everything the same way. So it's a lot easier when you're doing this to make sure that you're pressing towards the dark. It's just an easy way to remember which way to press. Also, if you're pressing towards the dark fabric, then your fabric won't show up. And this red really does show up underneath this white. So whenever possible, I am pressing towards the dark. But I will usually give it a press on both sides. So here are my pieces. I went ahead and cut them apart. And then I have pressed going towards the dark fabric. And that's what you're gonna want this to look like in order for this to work out. Next, we're going to sew our rows together and we're gonna nest these seams. And since we've pressed towards the red, your seam should nest perfectly. So you can just lay that right on top of there. And if this is your first video of mine, here is what a nested seam looks like. This one's going to the left, this one's going to the right, and they just butt right up next to each other there and they make a really nice junction. And then you can pin right there as well so that you have that perfect seam. I'm actually gonna just hold mine and take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna go ahead and just sew without pinning, um, but you definitely can pin if you prefer. All right, here that is. And now we're just gonna take this one Place it right side down. Again, nest those seams and sew right along this edge. So today we're gonna learn how to spin our seams. So you need all your seams going in a direction like counterclockwise or clockwise, it doesn't actually matter. You're gonna follow the seams that are already sewn. So this one's going to the left, that means this one needs to go up. This one's going to the right, that means this one needs to go down. And there's a tiny little thread right here, kind of holding those together. But if you pull those apart, just tug it just slightly, you'll see that this seam just opened up and created a tiny little four patch right there at the junction. And we can press that, you can finger press it for now. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing here. So these ones are going this way, that means this needs to go up, this needs to go up, and then this one needs to go down. And so we are going to just grab that and just pull that seam apart, just like that, and voila, we've got another tiny little pinwheel. And I'm gonna do one up close because I'm sure with my fingers in the way you're having a hard time seeing. You can also, if, if it's not laying flat, you can also take a seam ripper and just pick out that little stitch right there. And really you're just picking out stitches down to this stitch line, so it's not gonna come undone. You're just releasing the pressure on that fabric right there so that you have a nice little pinwheel. All right, let's close, do a close up. I'm actually gonna press that side just so it's, we don't have to deal with it anymore. And the seams actually kind of go the way they're supposed to go, just automatically, it's like magic. So here we are. We're, again, we're gonna follow our seams that are already there. These ones are non-movable, so we're gonna just follow those. So we're gonna go to the right. That means this one's gonna go up, across, and this one's gonna go down. And so we're just going to pull. We're not cutting any fabric or anything. We're just carefully pushing that seam in place. Very easy. And now you've got a really nice, let's look at it from the front actually. Here's our spun seams, here's our other spun seam, and here is our seam that was not spun, which you can hopefully see has a little bit of a, there's five layers of fabric pushing right here. This one is just nice and flat. So we're gonna do that on our last one. It was this way. <laughs> okay, again, we're just gonna follow our seams. So this one's going this way, this way, this way. That means this one needs to go up. And so I'm just gonna hold on to this one with my hand and just carefully pull this one. And like I said, you might have to just use your seam ripper to release a stitch right there, but there you go. You're not cutting any fabric. You're not cutting past this stitch line that's already here. You're simply releasing the stitch right here, holding these two together and allowing them to fold kind of the way they want to go. Now, doing this 
did push my red on top of my white. So that is something to be aware of if you're using a high contrast fabric like what I am doing. But I think in the long run, it's gonna be okay. So let's go ahead and press this. Hopefully the camera will get across exactly how nice and flat this block is. And you can do this anytime you have four seams coming together. So a pinwheel, a four patch, a nine patch, anytime where you have four seams coming together, four points coming together all at once, you can spin that seam. So really what you've done here is just distributed the bulk all the way around. So you've got an even amount of bulk going around each of those seams instead of all of it landing in one spot. So this particular little block should be six and a half by six and a half. I'm a little short. Oh, and look at, okay. So this is probably another good lesson. We're learning all kinds of things in this block. I went to go and trim this and I was like, wow, this side seems really short. What's going on? Well, when I pressed it, I wasn't being very careful because I'm on camera and look at that. I had pressed it not all the way flat. So now I just need to go over and just repress that and making sure that I don't have a little overlap right there and we should be good to go. Okay, our next step is actually just assembly. So we're gonna grab our A squares. Those go one in each corner, just like that. And then these guys, and they just go around the outside edge. You can totally change the look of this block as well. If you were to make this color exactly the same as this, I like a little bit of variety, but that's actually a really cool effect as well. Okay, so now we just need to sew. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, flip it right side down on top of this row and sew across, and then come and add this third row. You could also sew the top row, the middle row, and the bottom row, and then sew them together. Totally up to you on how you wanna do it. I like to chain piece, so that is what I am going to do. And again, you can pin if you want. Probably if you've seen enough of my videos, you know that I'm not a huge pinner. It does help you have more consistent blocks though, more accurate blocks, so. And now we just need to sew these together and I'm kind of a fan of uh, nesting seams. So I'm gonna uh, press these outside ones to the outside, the top and bottom row to the outside. And then I'm gonna press the inside row towards the center. And I'm gonna do that because these are straight seams, a little bit easier than pressing this way on this seam right here. So it's gonna lay a little bit flatter. You could also press your seams open if you wanted totally up to you. But I'm gonna press the center row in and the top and bottom row out. All right, so here is my block. Seams pressed in opposite directions. And now we can go ahead and sew those together. Now at this stage, I usually will pin because this is just a long strip and I just wanna make sure everything stays in place. You can also use wonder clips here, but I am gonna pin right at both of these junctions. I pressed my seams in opposite directions so they nest really easily. You can also press them open, whichever you prefer. And since nothing is overlapping, I'm actually gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew them at the same time. So I'm gonna go down and sew this side, this side, we'll press it, trim it, and then we'll be done with this block. Okay, I went ahead and pressed these side seams open just because there was a lot of bulk right here, obviously right here and right here. And so I just went ahead and pressed those open just to kind of help with that. But here is our finished block. I'm gonna use my 12 and a half inch ruler just to trim it up. When I trim these up, I'm just doing my best to make sure that I have about a quarter of an inch of uh, background fabric showing on all sides and sometimes your blocks are a little bit wonky and you just need to adjust them a little bit. This one did get a little bit wonky because my flying geese were a little bit off. But it's not enough to matter in the end with our whole quilt. So I didn't really trim off too much here. 
Here is our finished block for block number three. That is the red and white version. And then of course here is my Christmas version. I think they both turned out really cute. And hopefully you learned something new by spinning these seams on our nine patch unit. So that's gonna be it for today's video for block number three in our series. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you next month for block number four. Block. And then in today's video, I am gonna be showing you, um, you uh, I'm just looking at these to see if pressing open was worth it. I don't know. On this particular one, and this one's just being annoying, <laughs> we did reduce some bulk right here where these three seams came together, and eventually we'll, be have, we'll have reduced some bulk right here where all of these are coming together, but these aren't actually lining up with any other seams. They're gonna be on the top of a nine patch, so it's not that big of a deal. So I think for this block, I probably wouldn't worry about pressing open too much. Okay, ran out of bobbin. Hold please. <sighs> Whenever I change my bobbin, I do just kind of do a quick little get the fuzz out.